Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I put out my video for today, and I was just browsing through YouTube, and I saw one of the videos in my feed from one of the people that I subscribe to by the name of Rusty Walker. He's got a relatively small channel, but he does some really good work, and you should stop by and check him out real quick. The reason that this piqued my interest is that it had to do with an evacuation flight from Wuhan, China, to Southern California of American embassy personnel. Now, Zetetic Flat Earth raised some questions as to why this went to Fairbanks, Alaska, on the way to California from China. Now, Rusty did a fantastic job taking this apart. However, I wanted to add a little bit of flight planning to it. So you guys go check out Rusty's video, and we're going to go have a look at Zetetic Flat Earth's piece of garbage here. I hope you'll enjoy it. So roll the music and let's go. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not even going to break a sweat debunking this, so I'm just going to try and run it right through. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play Zetetic Flat Earth's video, and I'm going to stop it at key intervals, and we're just going to take it apart. It'll be fun. Several countries are flying their citizens out of Wuhan, including the United States. A plane carrying more than 200 Americans out of China just landed at an Air Force base in California. The passengers are mostly staff from the U.S. consulate in Wuhan, as well as a handful of other Americans. It was chartered by the U.S. government. It made a stop in Alaska for refueling. Yes, indeed, Sonny, refueling. Planes commonly refuel in Alaska. Let's see if you can get the city right. Where passengers were screened for any signs of illness. They don't go to Fairbanks. They go to Anchorage. Now, in case you need the airport identifier for Anchorage, it's Papa Alpha November Alpha. You do understand phonetic alphabet, right? You are a pilot, of course, and can plot this out yourself. Now, I'm curious as to where you got that 21 hour and 25 minute number. I don't see an explanation for that. Let's go ahead and check real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on over here to Sky Vector. And we're going to put the flight plan in. So the departure airport is Wunan. And the destination is March Air Force Base. And there are the designators for it. And here is the shortest flight route on a direct flight between those two locations. Notice it curves up and goes over the Aleutian Islands. But the other thing that you should notice too is that most of this is over water. Do you think the passengers and the pilots would know whether they were over water or over land? Well, maybe not. Maybe they did it at night. Well, let's go ahead and put in an actual cruising speed of an airliner. I mean, they showed a 747, it looked like there, and that's about 550. So let's go ahead and see how long it would take it to do that. Well, there we go. Let's see, the total flight time on a direct flight would be 10 hours and 39 minutes. See, where's this 21 hours and 25 minutes coming from? I'm a little confused. And again, you've got it leaving from Fairbanks. And you say it's seven hours and 20 minutes from Fairbanks. That's probably not too bad. Now here you're trying to plot a course directly from Wunan to March Air Force Base. It looks like it's along a line of latitude. That's not the flight path. That's the flight path. This is an aviation flight planning website that any of you can go to. That's Google Maps, and you're moving that line around as you see fit. Okay, so exactly where are you getting these numbers and these triangles from? I'm just kind of curious. Wait a second. You're drawing a two-dimensional triangle down there to represent a three-dimensional triangle. You can't do that. That triangle doesn't fit on a sphere. You have to use great circle courses. That's why the flight path from Wunan to March Air Force Base 
curves up over the Aleutians. That's a great circle course. Now, let me see if I can show that to you a little better. This is for flight. This is just my aviation software that I have on my iPad. So I've gone ahead and I've plotted that course. Now, there's a couple of things that you ought to notice. You notice right here, it goes over the tip of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Let's see how that looks on the original one. See? Goes right over the tip of the Kamchatka Peninsula. And then it'll cross the Aleutian Islands right here after this large peninsula. We'll see what that looks like on foreflight. So, here is Kamchatka. And then right over here is the Aleutian Islands right next to the Alaskan Peninsula. So, this matches up pretty well. So that's the actual foreflight route. But let's go ahead and continue. So your route is nowhere near where the actual flight route is. Okay, I love it when flat earthers try and play with maps. Now, here you've got a, an AE projection from the North Pole going between Wunan, China and March Air Force Base. Now notice he's got a little purple arrow right there. You see the Kamchatka Peninsula? It's, that little purple arrow goes well inland of it. It also goes over land almost the entire way. Yet the flight itself was over the sea because it followed the Great Circle course. But we'll have a little more on that. Now, by the way, in case you want to have a look at this in a similar view and why the Great Circle course is the shortest distance between any two points on a sphere, let's rotate that down a little bit. Well, looky there. It's a straight line now. And notice it goes over the tip of the Kanchaka Peninsula. It doesn't go inland. It doesn't go over the Bering Strait. And it doesn't go down the uh, western coast of North America from Alaska all the way down to California. So again, you can't even plot a flight plan. Next time, ask for some help. Drop me a note. I'll plot the flight plan for you and send it back to you, and you can use it in one of your videos. I'm happy to help you out. I'm here to educate people, starting with you. And again, notice they didn't go to Fairbanks. They go to Anchorage. That's the refueling spot. Yeah, that's Ileson. Now, I've never been over by March, but I've been to Ileson. All right, let's go ahead and research this and hopefully prevent these stupid errors from occurring in the future. So let's go back to my little flight planning software here. So here's Sky Vector. Let's go ahead and put a refueling stop in there, which is Anchorage, and that's Papa Alpha November Alpha. And then we hit return. There it is. It shifts the course over just a little bit but cuts the flight time down considerably and gives them an opportunity to start the screening in Anchorage. Doesn't change the course very much at all. Perfect location to stop for refueling. So, again, for a little bit more on this, go ahead and see Russell's video. I'll put a link to it in the description. Well, guys, you see how easy that was? Just took a couple of minutes. That's what a little bit of knowledge and using the right tools and understanding that you're looking for an airplane flight path rather than try to support a flat earth narrative does for you. Now, this is something that any of you can do. I've got all the data right up here on the screen for you to do it yourself. You can do this on your own computer right now. Satetic flat earth could have done this too but that would have completely blown his entire premise of this video and disrupted his attempt to support the Flat Earth narrative. So he went ahead and just kind of went with it and made a fool of himself again. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. I hope you had as much fun with this as I did. And Russell, nice job on the video. Take care.